guys this is gail of jewel by gail the jewel and of 876 documents now today i'm making this video to show you the construction of a little bag that i've been wanting to make i have never made this bag before and so this is my maiden voyage you're going to be witnessing so i'll just show you quickly what the parts are so starting with the base of the bag, this is the bottom, and the, there are two pieces of this for the inside lining and the outside, which is the bottom. This is going to form part of the closure, or I might actually change this and put a different closure type on it. Um, this is my pocket. It's already, it already has my logo on it and my, my label on it and uh, pinned around the edges. Um, this is reinforcement. It's going to be a wristlet, so this is the wrist piece. It's not yet stitched. I just pinned it. And this is the actual bag. And, of course, this is the lining. It matches the pockets. And I just dropped one of my little strips. This is just like part of um, to hold the hardware that I'm going to be using. Hardware or somewhere right here. All right, so if I do get this video done and I share it then I'll also share the dimensions of it um, but for now here goes everything um, let's get to it thank you for watching Here we go we are about to make a bag so i'm putting together my two sides i have a leather needle in and a leather <laughs> it's not a leather needle it is a leather sewing needle and i have some very strong thread that i believe i had bought when I made my leather bags. I believe it's a leather thread because it was inside of my leather apparatus bin. So I've already joined the side of my bag and now I am gonna attach the outside bottom. I don't have to make a seam on the other side, but I will because I need to make somewhat of a square. So I didn't open the other side of my bag, but I'm gonna stitch it anyway. I forgot something very important already. I forgot to put the pocket on my lining while I still had white thread. Now I'm wondering if I should put it on with orange thread, which is the shorthanded way. And it's seeming very tempting right now. I didn't open the side of my bag. I only opened one side, but I opened the other side just because I want the both sides to have a seam. And I pressed the seam open with pins my pins are always so far from me. I'll, yeah, I know I need one of those wristlet um, pin holders that I see some sewists with. But as I've said before, I'm a pretty basic sewist. I don't use a lot of gadgetry. <laughs> I don't use a lot of gadgets. I just keep it pretty basic. I'm just opening my seam so it will lay flat because now I'm going to attach the bottom of my bag. Now, the bottom of my bag is actually a square. And as you can see, my bag is slightly rounded. Either way, it's not a square, but let the attachment begin. So I'm gonna start from the side seam. So I'm gonna mark the center of this by giving it a little notch. Didn't mark this ahead of time. All right, so I'm gonna attach this to this. So my little notch is attached to my side seam. That way I have somewhere to start making this square from. And I'm going to attach the other one to this side. My seam is already open, so attaching that part is quite easy. But right now, I am going to struggle to go all the way around this square and make it seem like a circle. I'll be right back when I'm done. Okay, okay. So I have done the sides of my bag. I have attached the square bottom. Never attach a square bottom to a rounded piece of fabric. Fake the bottom. I'm going to do that next time or make a rounded bottom. But I put the bottom in, it was so hard. It's like trying to get a square peg into a round hole and they're exactly the same size. Because you know how people say square peg in a round hole, but it could go in, 
if the square peg is small enough. No. <laughs> so I attached my pocket and I put in a, a card pocket and I put in a lipstick pocket, more like a pen pocket. I always need a pen when I'm going out, you know, for those phone numbers. <laughs> so now I'm attaching the lining to the bag and I had it pinned before. Now I have to remember how to pin it again to make sure the lining goes in the right way and the pocket is upwards. <laughs> Having your pocket upwards is very important. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna mark where I'm gonna start stitching. This is not relevant because I think if you guys are making it, your, your lining will have two side seams. My lining only has one. So I'm attaching, I'm attaching where my pocket is to where the front of my bag is. So I am putting right side of my right side of my bag to the right side of my lining. Let me make sure I have that right. So when I put the bag in, the pocket will be upwards. Okay, that's correct. So right side of the bag to the right side of my lining. This part is gonna be easier than attaching the square bottom. So I'm just gonna stitch this all around and then I'm gonna tuck the lining in. All right, you guys do not need to see that because that's only gonna take up video time. So I'm gonna pause again. Okay, so I've attached my lining. Let's pray that I did it the right way. And when I tuck my lining in, my pocket actually is turned upwards. It's not a real concern, but... So this looks a little weird right now, but once I top stitch the lining, it will start finding its place and staying inside like a good little lining should. So the lining is gonna be in like this. Oh, come on lining, do what you know you're supposed to. Okay, so I'm gonna have the top stitch it before I show it. All right, we are almost there. My pocket is in, the pocket is facing upwards and we're looking good. Now I have to attach the inside because I want the inside of the bottom of my bag to have this as well because I want it to be a little more reinforced and I'm gonna put this in the inside of my bottom as well to further reinforce it. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is attaching the reinforcement to the bottom of the bag and I used an adhesive. Um, I didn't want to stitch this material. It's, I don't think it's, I don't think it would stitch very well. All right, so I've attached that. Now I just will let it sit and dry. Now I'm going to attach the inside bottom because like I said I'm doing a double bottom so when you look inside of the bag the bottom will be leather as well now I just have to attach this to this and then I tuck it in so I've done this before actually when I made my little bucket bag so this I know how to do what I don't know how to do is to is how to stitch around in a circle again but I'm gonna do that and I'll be back BRB so right now I am attaching the inside leather bottom to the lining and then I'll turn it over. So there are a couple of things that I have not done. I actually forgot to do them and that is attach the straps, one for the wristlet and one for one for the wristlet and two for the hardware on the side. All is not lost. I can always reopen the seam and attach them, so not a problem. It's good that I have my bag all done up anyway, because at least I'll get to see where everything will go. All right, so looks funny, but I'm about to push this inside of my bag. And now if you look inside of my bag, it has a leather base. If you are like me and your eyeliner pencil keeps falling in the bottom, that is if you still use eyeliner pencils, your eyeliner pencil keeps falling into the bottom of your bag and then messing up the lining of your bag and your bag used to be a lovely zebra print and then your eyeliner gets in there and you don't know where the zebra is anymore, you'll appreciate a leather bottom that you can wipe. Okay, so now we forgot to attach our closures. So we can always reopen this and attach it, and then we're gonna put our we're gonna put our, our wristlet on this side and our closure on this side, and then we're gonna put the two little pieces on this side for the hardware. When I'm done, you'll see what hardware I'm speaking of. So I'm gonna have to reopen my bag. Now I see that I will have to stitch around here when I'm completely finished because my lining 
is not trying to stay in. And I know why. And I can actually fix that. I can make my lining a little shorter. That way, once the bag is full, it pulls down on the lining and they, this piece will stay in. All right, so let's get back to doing that. So I am onto a very exciting part of my bag making, and that is I'm attaching part of my closure. I have to be very careful now because I'm sewing close to metal and there's really no way to get it out of my way and I am not changing my presser foot. So, I mean, I should use a different presser foot, but if I find it difficult to stitch, I will use a different foot. But for now, this is the foot I'm using. Here goes everything. So I'm stitching a square on top of this, but I'm not going all the way to the end. I'm leaving like 2 16th of an inch. Oh, times like these, I wish I had an industrial machine because this is not gonna turn around. Times like these, I wish I had one of those industrial machines like I see the tailor at my dry cleaners has. I think we're alone now. There doesn't seem to be anyone around. Let me get it started. Okay, why is my machine hesitating? Okay, a piece of thread is stuck right here. This one came out of here. But other than that, everything should be fine. Is it not stitching? Everybody says you should make, you should totally make stuff Excel. You know how long it takes to make stuff. I mean, enough to stock a store. You'd have to be make, <laughs> be making like one piece. be the only piece and market it as <laughs> one of a kind. There's, there's not enough hours in the day to make this stuff. I'm trying to be very careful. I'm not going all the way to the end. Back stitch. Okay. Come around and come up. Uh, I feel like I didn't get it as warm as I wanted it to be. to be exactly the same distance from the edge. It's like it's not exactly this. I can't see this now I need. And go back. Okay. It's attached. Now is that what they say? So this is attached. Not bad. Um could be a little straighter. I think I will go around it again and go inside of the existing square. I'm gonna go inside of the existing square for reinforcements. I'm gonna make another square inside of this one. I'm gonna have to fast forward through this part because now you're thinking, but why do you pause your video all the time? Why don't you just cut it when it gets to the editing room? Have you ever edited a video and have to cut and have to know which timestamp you're cutting at? Unless there's an easy way to know where to cut, which I don't know yet growth mindset I don't know yet until then I will be pausing my video yeah the factories is gonna have to make this one I am not for the easy mix and while this is quite a simple bag 
I don't fancy the intricacies of stitching so close to a metal loop or the other stuff, but it doesn't look too bad at all. It's attached, looks good. Looks like it's ready to function. And now I'm gonna put, now I'm going to attach, I've already stitched my focus. Come back focus, come back into focus. Okay, it doesn't wanna come back, so I'll just leave it alone. So now I am going to attach my wristlet and my machine is not like an industrial strength machine, but I am going to have to make this machine ride five layers of pleather. Thank God it's not leather because when I tell you that leather is hard to sew, leather is almost impenetrable. Almost. Industrial machines can sew it. The Italians do a great job. All right, so now I am about to attach my wristlet. I've already marked where I wanted it to go. I'm gonna put it up under my machine like this. Good thing I can remove this piece of the machine so I can get the bag to go over it the way the real bag makers do. Bag making is not my specialization, but when I see an easy bag, or, you know, what seems like an easy bag, you couldn't see me there, but I was side-eyeing the camera. Like, yeah, easy. Sure. This leather needle better do what I paid it to do. Yay! We've gone over five layers of pleather and one layer of cotton. Woohoo! Let's go over it again because we don't want our wristlet to come loose once the bag is full. When I go in to reinforce the, the strap on the wristlet, I do not stitch in the same spot again because it's leather. You don't want to go over the same holes you already made because that's going to weaken the bag at that point. Um, if you've sewn leather, you know once you put holes in it, proper holes, it stays, or at least pleather. Um, so I've stitched it twice to get it to hold. I'm pretty sure, and since I'm using leather thread, I'm pretty sure this strap will hold you could probably carry a bottle of beer with you to play with, or whatever, you know, to a BYOB party, and it would be strong enough. I don't know what I'm talking about because this is the last time I went to a party, and it's not even COVID's fault. I don't party. What I'm doing here is just a bit of housekeeping, nothing to talk about. It's riding leather because you hear it. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, all right, I'm gonna do a couple more things on it. So, this is my wrist lad. In the end, I'll show how it closes. I'll be back. All right, here we go again. So, what I am working on right now is top stitching around the opening, and with that, my bag should be done. I have been a little distracted watching The Last Kingdom, which I already watched. But I always re-watch shows I enjoy. And because my machine is not very well equipped to handle leather sewing, my presser foot has a hard time riding this leather, but it's gonna work. It's gonna do it. I just have to go slowly while I top stitch it. I make sure that I'm tucking in my white lining so you don't see lining peeking out of the top of my bag. Oh yeah. If I a strategy that I use, and that's just because my machine is not like industrial strength. This. This machine is old. Well, it's, I don't know how old it is, but it's not like technologically advanced. So what I do sometimes when I'm sewing um, fabrics like leather, I just put a little like Vaseline 
or something slippery to allow the presser foot to just glide over the fabric very well. Well, easier. And I just applied some and it's sliding over it. That wasn't a lo that wasn't a Vaseline, but it's a lotion from Mary Kay that is like Vaseline. It's called Satin Hands, but it looks like Vaseline coming out. It's very jelly, and just a little bit right where I want my stitches to go, and the foot just slides over. It. Here's a hack for you. Before this night is out, or before this day is out, it's actually night now. I want to make another bag and a dress very very ambitious but as a creative person if you have a creative child you have to watch them closely because your creative child will make all day and night and forget to eat or sleep when i am making something i just want to see it get done if i don't literally feel like i'm falling asleep i don't get up i have to tear myself away from the machine at night at least when i have time to sew I haven't had time to sew in a while because we've been doing professional development at work for the past three weeks and I've been writing two weeks of lesson plans just writing and writing and lesson plans and morning meetings so now it's trying to not ride this now what is this now six layers of leather I'm gonna pause the video again and take on this challenge and come back when I'm done it is done and I think it's beautiful. I have about 30 minutes of footage. Um, I'm going to record another video just showing it a little more up close. So this is what I have. So this, there's a hook right here. This hooks across the top. So my top is closed. And then this comes into here. First time closing it. And that's my bag. I'll do another video. Oh my God, it's so cute. So it's a wristlet. I'm in love. I think I'm gonna sell it. It's going to the highest bidder. My blood, sweat and tears went into this. So I'm gonna stop this video and I'm gonna record another one just showing this off a little more up close. is the part that I was going around in a square it could be a little better but these are so cute and so now so now it is closed up I have done the inside piece I've put it through here and that's what it looks like now um, because it has that inside piece it will be tucked in at the two sides but i was just thinking maybe i could like like stitch a little bit right here to hold it to give it that shape but it's pretty much gonna stay like this 
How cute is that? Just a wristlet. Or you just swing it down by your side. I think I'll sell it. I have a red one similar. And I have another one that's actually just like it. I have one just like it that I didn't make. Let me show the inspiration. So that's the inspiration. I think with the lining showing out of this one, I'm going to say, I mean, this is this is very neat. This is way neater than mine. This person has an industrial machine to use this thick kind of thread. I have this thick kind of thread, but my machine. Thank, thank you for watching. It. But the lining of mine is not like the top of mine is not so uneven. At least the top of mine is tucked in. But I love this one. I love the stripe lining. But cute. All right, so I'm going to show it off in the place where it was made, right beside the machine. All right, so this is across the top to pull the two sides in. I can't unlock it with one hand, I think. Let me try because this, this lock is a little bit. There we go. Now it's open. We can see inside of it. Here is your little, I thought my hand wouldn't be able to fit in here, but it does. That's the pocket. Let's turn her around. Um, that's my label. And that's my, I call it the lipstick pocket, but I don't think it's big enough for a lipstick, but I'm not going to change it now. And pick off the excess. All right, now I need to reclose it. And then this is the wristlet and then this is on this side and this is the part that I was going around in a square it could be a little better but these are so cute and so now So now it is closed up. I have done the inside piece. I've put it through here and that's what it looks like. Now, um, because it has that inside piece, it will be tucked in at the two sides, but I was just thinking maybe I could like, like stitch a little bit right here to hold it, to give it that shape, but it's pretty much going to stay like this. How cute is that? wristlet or you just swing it down by your side I think I'll sell it I have a red one similar and I have another one that's actually just like it I have one just like it that I didn't make let me show the inspiration so that's the inspiration I think with the lining showing out of this one, I'm going to say, I mean, this is, this is very neat. This is way neater than mine. This person has an industrial machine to use this thick kind of thread. I have this thick kind of thread, but my machine can't handle it. But the lining of mine is not, like the top of mine is not so uneven. At least the top of mine is tucked in. But I love this one. I love the stripe lining. But cute.